Welcome back to our Schooly Build channel. If you're new here, I'm Jimmy. I'm Natalie. And for the past month, we've been building out and converting this retired school bus. This week, we're gonna get started with running some wires, and later on, we're hoping to insulate and frame the ceiling, and then if everything goes well, we wanna also put up shiplap. Uh, if everything goes to plan, we should have ship lap up by the end of the week. No promises, though. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is build a mount to hold our wires. It's going to become quite tedious to try to unspool these at the same rate, so we're just going to build a little device to hold them so that we can mount them and unwind them as we go. I feel like this is going to help a lot when we start having to run the wires. So I've been busy trying to install these uh, wires for the lights. I've got one slightly larger gauge wire running along the length of the bus. And then from there, I'm using these three-way connectors to tee off and have smaller gauge wires come out and connect to the individual lights. Um, this is my first time using the T connectors. They're really helpful because they just let me tap into the, the one line. This is by no means a how-to, but I can kind of show you how I've been doing it. So this little part pops out. And it looks like there's some, like, some type of gel in there. So first thing I do is I wrap it around the wire and I try to keep it in one place after I connect it just so that that gel doesn't get everywhere on the wire. And I answered this, make sure it goes all the way to the end. The very first time I did this, I don't think I pushed hard enough and so it just kind of popped out. So I had to redo it. So I just push into it. And once you've got that, you can get out your pliers and then squeeze. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, right, and then I should just be able to pop it over. And it should, the, the top cut should kind of click into place. Keyword is should. There you go. Nice and easy. So we just finished running the first set of wires. So we're starting with DC lines today. And so we started with the refrigerator. So that's the, those are the lines that we just ran. It's the positive and negative that will connect to that. And it's a little bit thicker wire than we're using for some of the other DC lines, which are just gonna power USB outlets and lights, uh, like LED lights that don't take very much power at all. So that's why we're, we're using a slightly thicker wire for that. Um, since it is our refrigerator, but it really doesn't take that much power because it's still a refrigerator that runs off of 12 volt, which is pretty incredible. But it wasn't too bad. We technically ran a wire for our Max Air fan a couple of weeks ago when we installed it, just because we wanted to connect it to the battery and make sure that it worked, and it did. So I guess if we're being technical, this is not the first wire we've run in the bus, but it feels like it is because it's the first wire of wiring day.
Good morning guys, it's bright and early. It is a little bit chilly today, so I put back on my hoodie, but today's just another wiring day. We didn't get to a lot of stuff I thought we might be able to get to last night. We worked late into the night. I kind of put down the camera so we could just knock out more wires. I finished wiring most of the main lights and the bedroom lights, but then I ran out of 16 gauge cable, so I'm gonna have to go to the store, pick up some more um, to do like the shower light and a couple USB outlets. Um, but today we've got AC line we're gonna try to run, and then also some odd uh, appliances like the backup camera. We're gonna install the WeBoost and then also our HDMI cable that we're gonna have to run for our TV. So we've got a full schedule today, but we're gonna get started with running some AC lines because that should be easy to knock out. Yeah, let's get to it. Alright, we finished running our AC lines that go to the kitchen area, and now for the fun part, we're going to run our HDMI cable. This will run from the hidden TV in the kitchen area all the way through the ceiling down to the dinette. So we should be able to plug up our laptop from the dinette or couch area and uh, project and watch TV easily from our laptop. So we're running DC and AC, but we're also running the wires for our backup camera. So we're trying to figure out a good position to put that in right now. And after this, I think we're gonna hook up our WeBoost also because we'll need to run the cable for that. And we got that just to help boost our cell phone signal since we're using that for our cell phone and as a hotspot for internet. Just basically using it as like a ruler. Jimmy's drilling the hole for the camera wire, so I'm watching from the inside because he's putting another hole in the bus. So we have the backup camera installed on the roof of the bus and we brought out a portable battery bank so that we can go ahead and plug it up and make sure that it works and that we like where it is. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Jimmy's looking at it right now. I don't know what you can see, but there's the garage behind us. Yeah. Yeah, I love it, it's great. Yeah, we opted for the 1080p version, so it was like 20 more dollars than the 720 version. So I think it'll be good. Honestly, it's called a backup camera, but I'll probably use it more for like merging onto interstates and highways and things like that. I'm already kind of like a cautious driver and um, it's been easy now since there's nothing in the bus and you know, there's plenty of windows everywhere. But now, you know, we're starting to install the shower. There's gonna be walls up soon and we're just kind of blocking all of our lines of the site. So this is really gonna help. I'm glad we sprung for a more high definition camera. Um, I think it'll be really nice and just give us a better sense of what's around us. and. Also just be a little bit prettier to look at. For only $20, I think it's worth it. Um, hopefully it holds up. Yeah. Only 20 extra dollars. 20 extra dollars, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, we could put the version that we bought down in the description if you're interested. Um, yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head how much it was, but it was under 100, so I think this is a good deal. Yeah, it's nothing too fancy. Since we're installing it now, we can run the wires with the rest of our wires, so it'll be behind the wall and we won't see it. So hopefully it doesn't break because it will be very hard for us to replace it. We'll <laughs> kind of just have to run new lines if we were to, but. Yeah. 
Yeah. It'll work. Next, we're gonna go grab our WeBoost and grab the external cable and run that one. I'm surprised at how springy it is. I think it's just to protect against the wind. Makes so sense. It snap. Yeah, it feels really sturdy on there, so. Yeah. So we installed the outdoor antenna, the kind of longer one um, near the ladder. This is the indoor antenna. It's recommended that these need to be, I think like 25 feet apart for the version that we bought or 30 feet of vertical distance. Obviously we can't do either one of those. But the manual did say that having a metal roof will act as a separation between the two antennas. So there shouldn't be too much interference between them. And I think we kind of see that when we run our tests. So the two antennas connect to the WeBoost, which is like a small red device. And that's what provides the signal boost. No more wires. <laughs> no more messy wires. <laughs> so last night was another really late night. We um, had a lot more to run. Nothing crazy, just odds and ends. We had a lot of outlets we needed to run. And then we spent some time trying to clean up and do some cable management. Um, we got so close. We did everything except for the back Max Air fan. Um, we ran out of 16 gauge wire. We, actually, we ran out of all wire actually. So we have nothing to run it with. So. We've got to run to the store, get some more cable for that. And then while we're there, we're going to pick up some more tubing to try to secure the wires coming through the wall here. Since they're kind of leaning on some sharp metal, we just want to secure it and make sure that while we're driving later on, it's not going to bounce and rub and eventually cut through with those wires. But yeah, we were so close. We, we were up late all night trying to finish everything. We finished running the switches and the water pump lines, everything through the walls. We're so close. We just need to run one small line from the batteries to the fan and we're done. Um, so we're going to try to wrap that up. Once we get that done, um, I think we'll move on to throw some insulation up. Um, I don't think we'll bore you guys with much of that, but we're just going to throw some insulation above the roof and finish securing the wires. Uh, I think we mentioned that we wanted to get to shiplap, and I'm not sure if we will. The wiring took a lot more time than I thought. We managed to finish it all in two days, but uh, it was two very long days, and we thought that we would be a little bit further along by now. So we might not get to shiplap this week, but we're going to do our best.
lot of this uh, foam blade insulation was pretty much just plug and play, you know, cut it to length and tape it up. The one portion that was the most difficult was the, the small narrow column where we had um, a lot of our main wires running. And so they were really heavy since we had bound them all together and they're kind of drooping down. And the masking tape that we bought is not doing a good job of even holding up the two inch insulation board. So to kind of solve the problem, what I did was I just took some small nails and tapped them slightly into our support beams, just enough to hold the weight of the wires. And then I could squeeze seven inch um, boards uh, into the two to kind of prop the wires in place on top of the nails. And I just wedged it all into place. And so I'm just putting a nice insulated column here next to the heavy wires. So not the most elegant solution, but it's working for us. We've been out here all day working on putting up the furring strips into the ceiling and cutting out foam board insulation. And we're almost done, but I think it's safe to say that we're not getting to shiplap today. I think that was a little optimistic of us, but you can't hate us for trying. We are almost done with the foam board and then we will get to shiplap in next week's video. So sorry if we overpromised and underdelivered, but we did our best and I think this was a very productive week. We can show you what we have so far. We're gonna wrap up here with putting in the rest of the foam board, and next week we'll be able to put in shiplap, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for watching us if you stayed this long. Hope you had fun. We got a lot done this week, and as usual, we'll have just as much to do next week. So um, please consider subscribing if you haven't. Uh, we really appreciate it. We've had a lot of good comments, um, a lot of good suggestions, um, so we really appreciate the feedback. So you know, don't be afraid to leave a comment. We've been um, trying to respond to every single one of them. So if you comment, we will respond to you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye.